If you love indie tales, be sure to subscribe here and on Twitch, where I'm live most weekdays. You can also show your support through Patreon or on itch.io, where I upload assets and games shown on the channel. G'day pals, welcome to a new video. Today, I thought we would cover something that I've been working on in the last little while, and that's just a series of effects that I've been adding to my game. Uh, VFX usually cover things like shaders, particle systems, anything that gets drawn over the screen, uh, and particularly, you know, small scripts that tie those things together. So, given that my game is in part a platformer, I thought it was high time that the game had added a player shadow. Now, a player shadow in these kind of games is not really for lighting purposes. It's not a simulation of light or a shading system. That's something that uh, exists in Unity and I could have used that very easily. This is more of an indicator to ground the character in 2D space for easier platforming. Uh, usually these are oval shaped and sit beneath the player. Sometimes they shrink, sometimes they become more transparent uh, and they appear on surfaces that you stand on. Now, in research for this, we checked out a few different games. Uh, I've looked here at uh, Owlboy and Blasphemous and a game called Soldiers. And each of these do something quite similar, um, but none of them do exactly something that I thought uh, would be really cool and that I was pretty confident that I could achieve. So let me tell you about what my needs were. Basically, my game is tile based, but the tiles are quite organic in the way that they are shaped. I have two different kinds of slopes as well as straight edges. So I was interested in trying to make the shadow fit any 2D slope angle. I wanted the shadow to be masked out if the player was standing off of an edge, and I wanted it to conform to changing terrain. So if you're half on a slope and half on a straight, I still wanted it to feel like it was bound to the terrain. And I also wanted it to fade in and out with distance and to change shape too. The goal here was not to be realistic, but to be practical and to look aesthetically pleasing within the scope of the function that I defined for it to do. So we're not looking to do things like simulate the sun's position and have the shadow grow and shrink depending on where the sun is, nothing, nothing like that. Um, we're just trying to make this like UI element that feels like a shadow work in all of the situations that we use it. So I, I felt like I was pretty on track here to make like the, the coolest shadow that I'd ever seen in a platform game. Uh, not to take anything away from other developers, this feature is super nitpicky and not something players even notice for the most part if you're not really looking. But I was going to implement it anyway, so I thought I might as well go all out. Now this is a slightly more expensive solution as well, it's got some ray casting going on. Uh, so uh, it's not really the most efficient thing that you would ever do, but it could easily scale to other games, so I thought it was worth exploring. So how was I going to achieve this? The strategy in my mind was to set up an array of pixel sprites that run underneath the character. Each of the pixel sprite objects casts a ray down every frame to the nearest ground beneath the player, stopping where the ray hits. This way, um, we can just like move those pixel objects down until they hit that ray hit point and then offset them. So it's super easy that way. Now, this was really straightforward. I mean, like just defining a width, uh, and in my game, I have like a set width for each of the characters based on like a, a box, like a physics box. So I could easily just read that in and get the correct width, and that would correspond to the number of particles. So we had like, you know, 20 or so uh, for the character. And there were a few challenges here. The first one that came up was that the actual origin point of the shadow needed to be a set position that it started from relative to the character. And in the case of my character, he's kind of leaning forward a little bit. So his feet aren't always in the same place and they're not always equidistant from the center of the frame. So I decided to just have like a fixed offset based on the transform position under the center of mass, just a little bit further forward. And uh, yeah, it wasn't too long until we got this working. It was pretty straightforward actually. And uh, something that I've done quite a lot of, it's just a list. The second thing I wanted to achieve was that um, if the player jumps, I wanted pixels either side of the shadow to start becoming more invisible until a minimum width is achieved. So if you jump up really high, the shadow would be like half the size or a quarter of the size of its full size. And that would be sort of like erasing the pixels from the outside in. Uh, and I also wanted the entire shadow to become more transparent as the ray distance increases. So as we jump, we want it to shrink and we want it to uh, become more transparent. This was also, you know, relatively straightforward. Uh, there were a couple of issues to do with um, 
turning around really quickly and having the shadow catch up. And this is a simple fix as well. We just have the shadow pixels update during late update rather than the regular update. And this means that after the player's orientation has been set, the, uh, the pixel sprites would be set after that. So they'd always be in the correct uh, orientation. They'd always be facing the right way. Now, a little edge case came up here that kind of escaped my original prototyping. Uh, and this is how to handle partial drops. So I have areas in the game where, you know, it's only a one or two tile drop down. And in this context, we would have the shadow kind of splitting. Now this is relatively like realistic. It's, it's actually not a bad effect, but uh, it looked kind of weird being broken into two different spaces. So I considered having the, the middle pixel, like the pixel that was between the top edge and the bottom edge, uh, stretch all the way down. However, uh, this needs to account for wall geometry, which could be concave. So if the wall goes back away from the ledge, that kind of looks weird. And then the other thing would be, we would need some sort of like gradient for the opacity so that it meshes with the pixels that it's uh, adjacent to. So I decided not to do that and just to uh, do what I did next, which was to cull the edges and also to create a chamfer uh, or like a cutaway on the, uh, on the shadow itself. So the chamfering is basically just like, uh, like a 45 degree angle. Uh, it's like a woodworking term. And so I use this to basically just create like a more rounded perspective on the shadow. And this was just tied to a value that you can change. All this is doing is taking those pixels, which are normally being stretched to be two pixels tall and making the ones on the outside edges one pixel tall. So it's really straightforward. They're being painted from the top left and they're being stretched down. So in this case, we're only just stretching them down by one rather than two. And for the culling, this was really interesting because I wanted it to be based on like just the high side, whichever edge is higher, that's the edge that the shadow is going to get drawn on. And once the shadow extends off the edge, I wanted it to disappear. So rather than have to check every single pixel and to try to determine which side is higher and when to start deleting them and when to keep them, I came up with this idea where we would just check the furthest left and the furthest right pixel in the whole shadow and just pick whichever is higher. And whichever one's higher, we start counting from that side. We start iterating through all of the pixels. As soon as we hit a significant drop in height between any of the two ray casts that we find, we just make the rest invisible. And that way we can cull from either direction and we only have to iterate through a set amount, like, you know, up to half or, you know, less than the entire amount of the pixels. And this saves us on additional processing that we'd otherwise have to do. So after a fair bit of playing around and a lot of tweaking to do with uh, alignment and counting the pixels from the center with an even set versus an odd set and a bunch of other little quirks that were playing with things like off by one errors, I came up with an implementation that I really liked. And I spent the next day just tidying it up, making it more readable and preparing it to be an asset. So you can see here, it's working really well. And my goal from here was just to take away any of the dependencies on my game. So any of that auto sizing stuff, uh, just turn that into a parameter that uh, users could set and then uh, apply custom coloring. So uh, users can decide what color they want the shadows to be at the darkest point, at the lightest point, how black, how transparent, that kind of thing. So there you go custom player shadow for a platform game that you can use in your own titles that's uh dare i say better than anything else that's out there thanks guys for watching i hope you enjoyed and uh, if you want a link to this it'll be on itch you can find that in the description and i hope you enjoy see you in the next one hey pal thanks for watching and thanks most especially to the patrons and twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project insignia to find out more click the links in the description below and uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.